السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی نیم از عبد الرحمن اینڈ دس از حافظ تمیم وی بوت آر فرام دا اسلامک سوسائٹی آف ایسٹ پین فری مونٹ اینڈ وی ہیو اے گوسل فیسلٹی دیئر مے بی وی کین شو اے بٹ آف دیٹ اینڈ دین جمپ سو دا فیسلٹی ایٹ دا لوری مسجد وی ایٹ دا دا بیک آف دا دا فیسلٹی وی ہیو دس روم کالڈ دا گوسل فیسلٹی basically it has um, a cold storage uh, for three deceased people to store to be stored it uh, it has a room which has ventilations and um, drainage systems clean uh, you know it's a clean tiled surface with a sink at the corner that you see and then there's a table which has a which has a, a pathways on both sides for the water to drain down or uh, down the table <clears throat> into a hole which will uh, go into the sink so basically we have the deceased placed on the table and then we move the table almost close to the end of the sink and uh, then we have the water facility to give a uh, gusul and also shroud after that um so and also you see uh, there's an there is this uh thing for uh, heavy uh, individuals we can use this motorized kind of a thing which has three strips which we can put under the deceased and lift them uh, you know via motor it's a motorized lift so th- this is the facility at lowry masjid and we have been uh, giving gusul for uh, many years uh, so this is something we want to share with the community all are welcome any time to come and give gusul with that said i'm going to jump into the kafan just because we want to lay the clothes on the table so you know so kafan let me go to this for men it's three uh, piece of unstitched cloth uh, there is no stitches it's three unstitched piece of cloths the biggest one is chadar the biggest one is the chadar which is the biggest piece of cloth which is at the bottom most the next one this one is izar so you see there that is already laid which is the biggest piece of cloth on on the table the next one is uh izar which is like the the bottom half of the of the of the kafan so so that's the piece of cloth there so we can lay this out you want to say the head this side or okay yeah so we are going to place the head on that side so we have the bottom half of the you know the izar on this one so this is a second piece of unstitched cloth there is no stitching it's just a cut you can get from any fabric store of a good size and that that should that should work fine for anyone kafan and the third piece is a, kam- a kameez and if you look at the if you look at the kameez or the shirt it's a rectangular piece of cloth and that has a slit so basically what we are going to do is we are going to lay it on this side which would be the head this way and we would take the top part away for this at this point so that we can place the individual um we can place the individual where the slit is you know and then cover the top part through the slit so so and then the most important part is the uh tie rope the ties so there are three tie uh, tie ropes that should generally go at the bottom so hmm? do it later oh. yeah so just to show how it is it's just a tie rope it's just a you know tie rope so basically it is placed in three different places the center one on the head and one on the feet so we would use this uh, we would lay down the lay this coffin inside this on a separate table because after the washing when you dry that's when we bring him and lay it on the on the thing so this is a so this is a grave that you see in five pillars basically they have a concrete l- liner called grave liner and also there is a, a concrete slab that goes on top on top and then um the cost is around 2000 dollars for a cost of a grave site 
at Livermore. And then there is an additional cost of 3900 which is which includes the endowment fee, the grave liner, the concrete lid marker to put a name and when someone passed away, and the opening and the closing cost. So all those add up to all those add up to 3900 plus 2000 which will be 5900 for one grave site for an for an adult and on a weekend it will be 500 dollars more uh, because of the uh, 500 dollars more for labor which is um, so if you pass on a weekend it is 500 dollars more so, and uh, some uh, symmetries like loan symmetry they mandate not a, i mean we don't use this casket or cardboard carrier into the grave you know but in some symmetry they mandate a use of a cardboard um, um, a wooden wooden casket uh, like lone tree or some of a symmetry they say they won't let but you could request them to not have the wooden casket that would cost a 500 dollars so this is the basic things about the grave and the coffin now let's jump into the actual uh, process or a um, couple of uh, process that is followed in California. So when a person is uh, sick for a long time, you know, and he passes away, we generally categorize them as natural death because he's been sick, ill for a long time, uh, or elderly gentlemen mostly, and also youngsters who are sick for a long time. It's a natural death. Um, so, and then there is another category where it's an unnatural death. Unnatural deaths are car accidents, or someone passes away at home. Um, so the first thing when someone passes away uh, at, uh, in a home or a, or a car accident, the first thing is the, the paramedics come. So if it is at a home, you have to call the paramedics 911. They come in and they check an individual for their pulse and make sure they are alive. If, it was, if they are alive, they are taken to a hospital. If not, if they are declared dead, they call cops. And the cops and the paramedics come in and then um, call the coroners. Call the coroners to make sure, call the coroners to take the individual to a coroner to do an autopsy to find the cause of death. So if a coroner comes into play or he comes into action because of an unnatural death, they are going to do an autopsy on the individual to find the cause of death. Because in California, a doctor has to certify the cause of death. So when there is an unnatural, then you have to go to a coroner to an autopsy to find the cause of death. It's a DUI or drugs or any kind of a thing. So the coroners will cut open the chest all the way to the bottom, take out some body parts, take out fluids as well, and just evaluate what was the cause of death. And also they do an, a cut over the head all the way. And then they sue the, on the body after the, and then the doctor certifies the cause of death as something other than if it is non-alcohol or alcohol or drugs or whatever because no doctor in case of an unnatural death will come forward to certify an individual so that's the that's the reason when you have some individuals at home who have a history of sickness like high blood pressure it's good to have medical records and and visits with doctor so you know for sure you can convince those paramedics that this individual had a history of of illness and there's a doctor who is vouched for and they, they did visit doctor. Because sometimes people don't visit doctors for a long time. The doctors are not in the position to certify or they, they are not going to certify. So it's a good practice to keep in touch with the doctors for people who are sick and also have the documentation. This way you can prevent, you know, um, a, a coroner taking away the body and doing autopsy on you. So this is something to keep in mind but whenever there's an unnatural death you have to call the paramedics and call 911 it's it's a, it's a required now when an adult pass you get a death certificate same with a natural or unnatural when it, when a small baby uh, um, the loss of a baby before or during delivery this is another category of um, death uh, less than 20 weeks you don't need a paperwork to bury for any burial of a deceased, you need to have a burial permit. So in case of a stillbirth less than 20 weeks, you don't need a burial permit. So you can just um, um, bury, and they are very small. You can do it in the backyard or 
any any vacant land you can bury them you have to ask for for a doctor to release the that individual because they are very they are, they are smaller than your palm you know and then 20 weeks or above is a stillbirth and you will have to get a paperwork which is 500 dollars not too expensive and then you can find places in sacramento to uh, uh, to bury them uh, in case of uh, uh, five pillars they charge 1200 for an uh, you know for a child they don't have a special uh, price for you know so these are the kinds of loss of an individual and for any case except for the 20 weeks you would need a burial permit and the burial permit requires a doctor to, a doctor comes into play because he has to give the cause of death or a coroner will give a cause of death and that's when a burial permit is issued and with the burial permit you can go to five pillars or anywhere to bury a deceased um, couple of do's and don'ts uh, uh, yeah this is something i mentioned update updated medical records can help you know uh, save the coroner's autopsy that's important don't leave parents alone we have seen cases where Parents are left alone and they pass away. Three days, four days, no one is there and it can get pretty bad. Students and Uber drivers, sometimes they go in night doing Uber and they pass away. They, um, so they may not get an Islamic burial. If they don't carry with them an identi identification which states that I'm a Muslim or please contact you know, a Muslim friend. So it is always advised for students and Uber drivers to carry something that tells that they need you know in case of an emergency they can get a right kind of an attention and then some people demand they want to transport their disease to back India Pakistan or Bangladesh and for that there's uh, uh, embalming is a process that is required to transport uh, a deceased um, or to transport them by air embalming is basically uh, they take out the fluids of the body and uh, they, they, they fill it with formaldehyde and formaldehydes are carcinogenic and also they the purpose of it is to uh, slow down the decaying process so the the disease don't decay quicker so formaldehyde and this is something we recommend not to do and, and do a local burial uh, again we just uh, advise them it's up to them it can cost up to fifteen thousand dollars to transport a deceased to a different part of the world and then I just used to mention about Singapore too. It's a small country. They don't, they allow only burial of uh, naturalized citizens. There is no place for uh, outsiders. So in those, in, in, in Singapore, you'll have to transport it if you're not a citizen because of the space. There is no, there's no place for burial in Singapore. So this is some basic things just to keep in mind about updated medical records. Very important if you have anyone sick in family and that can save uh, a trip to coroners and also the autopsy. So, with that said, any questions so far? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, the MCC website has contact numbers if you go. Uh, similarly, the Islamic uh, Society of East Bay website has it. If you even call your Imam or the local masjid, that's the place to get it right away. And you know, there's a uh, contact for Imam Siraj, myself, and for sisters, there's Re Sister Rihanna Marker. And uh, many people know. Um, so so that's the website is the first place to go uh, or call the Imam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So there was a recent death. It was an elderly woman, but passed away at home. You know, so they do a lot of they ask a lot of questions and then see the kind of state. If there's an elderly woman or thing, they let easily go with few questions. Still, it's questions were asked, and the coroners were called, and within a um, you know um, you know with a close call with them, they make a call whether to release it at home itself or transport it to coroners. So there is an investigation. If it's a young person, uh, you know, because of uh, acidic or some kind of a thing, an obese person, 
there will be a lot of investigations and if they have to take it there is no way out but you can convince them we are muslims we don't uh, drink alcohol we don't take drugs we are you know we can convince a lot but then uh, and that's only so much you can do it's up to the coroners to make the call uh, we have got some exemptions just making those calls but in some cases where there was a car accident tariq kanzada was one of them very well known personality he was helping on a on a on a freeway 237 at 2 am to help someone and he got uh, hit by another car in the back and uh, so he passed away so there are many instances of that uh, where if it is a gunshot wound there are a lot of muslims they go encounter with po- cops and uh, they are shot and it has to go through uh, coroners there's no and when they come when the coroners cops comes and uh, coroners it comes from the coroners they are uh, lightly sutured with a lot of gaps and um, so we just take care to gently use uh, you know not too much water yeah so they are sutured uh, sutured, uh, sutured into a little big larger like one and a half inch caps you know so if you give a ghusl the blood is going to uh, come out when it gets warm when you use a warm lukewarm water the blood is going to come out but we just make sure we don't shake too much or you know we just make sure the basics of uh, the ghusl is complete so those are basic things and when you do a, uh, a paperwork for a deceased you have to make sure the social security and the names match of the deceased you know some people have four words in them you have to make sure you have the right first name last name and middle and then the social otherwise it gets rejected in the sense they can't find a match against the social security it can delay the the ghusl and the burial and also knowing uh, also making sure the doctor is available and he is reachable because those can delay the burial permit so if you can't get a burial permit on time we can't release the body or you know we can't bury <clears throat> yeah whoever has been giving care to the patient and when the patient passes away make sure you talk to the doctor and you tell them see we we do islamic burial and it's quick we have to do so you expect a call from the funeral director and kindly attend the call because they have to classify or they have to state the cause of death so it, they are called twice first to get the information then they are put in computer system and then when it comes in they have to authorize yes this is correct the second time so if the if the doctors are in um, in rounds or away on vacation and if you if you not communicated then it can delay it can get uh, it can delay the real you know uh, the burial permit and you can't give ghusl so it's good practice to just be just communicate with the doctors when such a situation arise and like i said the name the social security number uh, also um, basic information their parents and how, where they lived that's good enough that's good enough for a, for a funeral home to send a send a hearse to release from wherever so what happens is just to go to the process right the final step before we jump in so you call the funeral home and f- and we we help you with that and you just fill up some details you are giving you are giving permission to release the the individual to this funeral home so the funeral homes come to the home or a hospital or a coroners and they pick up the deceased and they come to the masjid lawri masjid and they place them in the one of the three storage facility we have and while they are working on the burial permit we can give ghusl and uh, you know and and the shrouding um and then keep it ready when the burial permit comes we take them to the cemetery the hearse the hearse is sent by the funeral home so the cost of the funeral home is around 2800 uh, you know 2800 dollars just to for the funeral home to send the hearse work on the burial permit and work on the death certificate eventually which you will receive after 2 weeks and pick them pick them up and uh, you know transfer them to the cemetery so around 2800 that includes some donation to the mosque as well that includes and then the cemetery cost is around 5900 so that's this is the basic process the process is very simple it takes 15 20 minutes in the morning uh, whenever the person individual passes away 15 20 minutes you can get within 2 hours a person to come and pick up in some cases the family wants them in their home for a day 
so you just make a work it out with the funeral home please come tomorrow morning because we have guests coming home to see the deceased and so they can hold into the in the house for a, for a less than a day and nothing nothing harm will happen we just make sure the we keep something heavy on the stomach so they don't bloat uh, clean white cloth is covered uh, when they pass away um, they are they are generally their face is kept towards the qibla you know even before passing away so before passing away when an in individual is extremely sick and you know it's cl time close to the that you just prepare the room in such a way that the face is always facing the qibla or the face and the leg is facing the qibla with the head raised um, the clean room with no pictures and stuff just to help uh, angels come in easily and and then people reciting surah yasin and talqeen about ashhadu alla ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna just to remind the individual to make that before they pass away so those are the basic things but we, you know when a person is going to pass away the knees are bent they they get bent uh, the nose shrink the temples also go in deep they do heavy breathing those are the signs when a person is going to go away uh, or leave this world and also it's good to <clears throat> give some zamzam uh, always give a few drops of zamzam during that time to help ease the 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 passing and and they're not dry and you know they're not dry and um, so those are the some basic things and you can ask with your ulama or in things to do when someone is sick or close to uh, uh, their death so with that said we can jump on to the practical aspect of giving gusul basically gusul means is washing washing of a of a deceased i have this mannequin which is made um it is assume that um it has yeah basically um uh, so it comes from a hospital it comes in a in a bag hospital bag sometimes they're double double wrapped uh, they have a hospital gowns oh another thing to important that that needs to be mentioned here when a person passes away in a hospital with lot of tubes it's good to tell the the nurses there to take away whatever is possible the tubes from the individual some the tubes can go all some tubes go in and they they have a mechanism to bloat uh, i mean kind of a a balloon uh, to to get attached to internally so those pipes won't come out so i think those things you can cut it off at the mouth or but any things like that can be removable you can ask them and they can help you because we are not expert when we give you know gusul we don't know exactly what is going on but it's good to get and get those as much as taken away from their body easily with the help of a nurse before they come to us so with that said um we are going into the actual uh, uh process so the first thing what we do they come in complete bag like i said so we place them on a table and before that there are a couple of a uh, couple of things to follow up, uh, follow in the gusul firstly Uh, the satar the satar is the area between the navel and below the knee that area will be covered all the time at no point of time is the satar not covered so from start even bef before on the bag itself we start covering the satar uh, second important thing is no recitation of uh, quran in the while giving ghusl because it's dirty place um, it's all with lot of blood and all those things so we have to clean them up so no recitation of quran while giving ghusl process thirdly you can make dua allahumma aghfir lahu wa allah forgive him you know allah forgive us allahumma aghfir li these are duas you can recite while doing ghusl the most important thing is any imperfections or shortcomings that you see on the individual for example if it is coming from a coroner you would see all those ghastly sights of cuts right you can't reveal those to any your spouses or any individual you have to those kind of a missing limb or anything or whatever you see any imperfections or shortcomings that you see on the individual for people who are giving ghusl it's the family members who are giving ghusl they have to keep it to themselves till till they die as amana it cannot be they can't share it with their with the spouses or with children or anyone how he looked any good things you can share but anything like this you keep it to yourself till you die with that said the hadith says 40 major sins are forgiven for people who participate in the ghusl 
so who can give gusul only the for for a man it is it's a man the the closest father mother brother oh uh, sorry father son brother those are the people who can give gusul to the to them the male folks and women give gusul to the women only if a, if a child is really small and they are not uh, age um, uh, matured uh, the mom or a dad can give gusul to the baby that said if you can't find any men folks it's a pious uh, people of the from the community can come and give or you can choose uh, anyone who are pious they can give gusul but the priority is for the family members so we encourage all the family members to come and participate because it's their last obligation and um, uh, service or uh, khidmat khidmat to the the individual who's passing away so the family members are you know uh, are participating so so no quran uh, dua is okay um, and the satr is covered all the time and then basically three things to keep in mind uh, istinja washing of the private parts wudu and the body body bath so these are the three things that you do in a in a bigger picture for ghusl washing so this is similar to how we give ghusl to ourselves for juma or anything you have to wash cleanse all the dirt areas the dirt you know istinja and then wudu and body bath so this is a basic thing so with that said um, uh, so we have the the body uh, the body is in a bag body bag so uh, let's come here so with this uh, clothes on uh, with the satar covered we undo all the clothes and so basically with the satar covered we take away all those all these clothes everything the bags all the tags uh, the you know all the tags all the bandages that you can see and also the diapers everything so what we do is basically if there is anything below we cut open with a scissor on the, the clothes just to make it easy uh, to remove the clothes from the individual and also all the bandage anything that doesn't come out or a tube you know we can we can see if there is already a clamp sometimes close to the mouth we can just cut on the top it's not going to um, cause we also take the opinion of the family members is it going to be a pro- do you know what is happening is it going to cause you know it would be some iv thing or it's not a big deal so so once those are cut off and taken off um, anything anything like a ring which is removable we take it out and dentures we take it out but generally when a person passes away rigor mortis sets in so the body gets firm so you can't open your jaws or things so easily to remove even dentures so if you have dentures even in the hospital it's a good time to take it out when they are still you know Uh, oxygen in the body so with that said we remove everything um and with the satar on with the satar on and the first thing what we do is we will um, press the abdomen three times to so there are people around the around the table they help lift him a bit with the head and the shoulder and press the abdomen three times the per idea behind that is any kind of um, uh, uh, thing that you want to take it out of the system you can do that with a gentle massage for of three times so before doing this we make a niya of giving ghusl to the mayit and generally the mayit is placed with qibla facing the qibla in our facility so basically all the dirt in the body whatever can come out with that pressure can come out you know and then we start with the istinja so like i said the first thing is the istinja so we we give clothes so if you have to touch clean the private parts you can't do it with your fingers or gloves so even before this right everyone is wearing apron everyone is wearing a mask everyone has gloves on with the cap and the shoes everything you know because um we have to see about the hygiene bacteria and all those things we have to protect ourselves and as a as a process we have to wear it so with that said the um Four thirty. Um, so, so it's tinja, right? So we, so people around the family members closest will have a wrap around the cloth around their hand with the soap with water. Or oh, before that, we would have also run flushed a lot of water and just wet him up and then press, and then we cover the hand with the with the cloth like this, and then the cloth is wetted 
and then with the soap you go under the covers there are four people holding this satar this cloth for satar and then you wipe the wipe the private parts so while doing that we also try to help split this so that we have clearance just to cover everything not just the private parts even the groin area and all the inner thigh area all the dirt area and complicated area we just clean it up when while we are there so the idea is this should not be stained you'll know if the water is clean or this is clean then we know it's clean you know so we we use and throw away all these small clothes small towels to a point where we feel good that it's clean on the top on the top and the groins and all those then we turn always um, so we turn him now we are we have to do a stinge of the back side so what we do is we have people turning him this way and there are people standing there and cleaning up the back side of the private part so while doing that we also sometimes lift the leg up just to get some clearance so everything is cleaned in the back so all that is cleaned and then we also cover the lower back you know lower back and all those areas could be if they are wearing diapers it can be soiled as well so we cover all those area around the diaper area the lower back everything it's clean we do the same thing from this side as well so one side from the right side and then one from the left side so with that said the istinja is complete so we press the abdomen first and then the istinja is done so with that done we remove the gloves of the individuals because it's not clean anymore so they change their gloves or they can wear a double or triple and they take it out now we go to the wudu and the wudu is basically the faraid of wudu so uh, oh even before that right before going there we also make sure as part of the stinger right i make sure that the nose is all clean as well you know a lot of blood and um, fluids might be around the mouth area right so before giving the wudu i just make sure we use the cotton roll it up roll into the nose take away all the dirt that are easily re- removable all the blood stains so clean up all those the face itself and then we do the wudu the wudu we start with the just with the sunna part of it which is just the right hand first with the kilal of the fingers and then the left hand three times so three times and three times you just start off and then we do the face so the face again uh, first we'll do the face again uh, three times ear lobe to ear lobe and from the top to all the way to all the beard every piece of hair is covered and gusul is done we can cover the nose so that the water doesn't go inside so there is enough water on the face to do the wudu of the face once the wudu of face is done we do the right arm three times below the elbow three times same like how we do yeah same thing like how we do wudu three times on the left hand so right and then left then the massage of the head one time and then the right foot above the ankles and the left foot so once that is done the wudu is complete so we started off with the pressing of abdomen istinja and wudu wudu is done with the satar covered and if the this cloth is dirty soiled we replace it even before wudu before wudu if it is very dirty we replace it and do the wudu that said the last but one is the body bath the body bath the idea is to wash the right side of the body and then the left side so when we do the right side we do this on the top and then we turn him do it in the back and then the left side and the left side back okay so for that we have three four people we someone focuses on the in the face neck underarms and any time with the private area you use a cloth you can do we you can't do it just with the gloves you have to use a cloth so you don't feel the the private touching of the private parts you use cloths for all those private areas washing washing the leg on the right then we turn him and then we wash everything so the whole body every nook and corner of the body has to be wet so every we can do a lot of spray or you have a flow water flow or we have lots of jugs of water that we just pour and there are four or five people there everyone is focusing on giving a very good very good bath so the right side and the right side back and the left side and left side back three times so with that that completes washing and then we press the abdomen one more time this time the wudu is not mandated it's just a masnoon we just press the abdomen but we also flush in some water just 
if anything happens but we don't have to give wudu and the last part of this ghusl is is uh, we we have camphor camphor is uh, is something you can pass it on here you can smell this open this and so what we do is we put this camphor in the water it gives you that kind of a uh, a, a, a fragrance that is that hides all the um, you know uh, foul smells of uh, disease so it's just camphor karpur you know it's strong it's very strong and so we powder few tablets of those into water and we just run with them so the body stays fresh and you know with that kind of a is that part of like the sunnah or the so uh, generally they, they have used uh, leaves and um, you know bay leaves the, some people the, the IER or some some kind of tree leaves they used to use that that leaves are naturally fragrant so they used to mix in the water and pour the water so you can get them uh, in the stores online maybe uh, we can mix that with the water and then use them also after that we just dry him up completely by the way right the ruh is the soul is still alive so he can listen to all of us it's just the physical body that is departed in the, the the ruh the soul is still alive and he can hear all what we speak and you know he can hear everything so we dry him up completely everything the table as well the back the front everything is dry and it's the table is so dry and we move him into the 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 casket which has the kafan which is shrouding part so that completes washing so any questions with washing so far and then the last part is the shrouding part which is just uh, wrapping the Sunnah, but the, the way they used to do it, use those good uh, smelling leaves, they mix into the water and pour it. It is Sunnah. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So is the, is the order important? Like you have to do the wudu first and then washing? Can it be the other way around? Yeah, no, the sequence so is... That is a sequence that we should do for ourselves also. That is Sunnah. The order is also Sunnah. See, even if a blood stain is there, right, you fell down, blood, and you are Salah time, you need to clear all the blood and stains, right? Even if you vomited, you can't, you need to clean them up, and then... So, Udu first, and then Ghusl. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, Udu. first cleaning, that's obvious, yeah, still, but yeah. these two also, Udu first, Ghusl next. Okay. Yeah, good point. Um, so, with that said, uh, shrouding. So, we come to the point where shrouding. Yeah. So, let's... this is the kafan part so like we mentioned earlier i don't know if you guys you, you started a little bit late i think so that we are going to the shrouding the shrouding basically involves yeah so let's see here quickly so for shrouding we use three unstitched piece of cloth um it's like a blanket the biggest piece is a blanket kind of a blanket chadar you see there that's laid there it's a rectangular piece it's a big piece the biggest which is at the bottom most but even before this right we have three tie ropes we place three tie ropes one by the leg one in the mid section and one by the head so there are three tie ropes that are placed and then the biggest uh, sheet is is laid down and then you get the the second sheet is called izar is basically for the the lower portion of the for the individual so you can see there on the table and then on top is kameez which is like a shirt it's a rectangular piece with a slit you can see there the slit is where the head rests so there is this a rectangular piece with a slit in the middle so the back part uh, the back uh, the one half of the sheet covers the back and the other one on the front with a slit see here? so this is like this it's like a with a slit here on one side and then it's a rectangular piece the bottom covers the bottom and then he just placed the the top part on on front so the satar at this point right the satar is still covered so now we have dried after the washing we have completely dried the uh, the deceased and then placed them in the in the, in the in the casket in the cardboard and um, the first thing we do no. 
So can, can you turn it on? Yeah, so after the washing, after the washing, this is the question is about how do you dry them? We have a lot of towels. So we literally go and dab on the, on the individual every corner and also turn him and dry the back, the f underarms, all parts of body with the satar still on, you know. But when you're drying the, the private area, we still cover with a cloth, not with the fingers. Right? So we dry thoroughly, the table is dry as well, and then we shift the, the deceased onto the, the, the cardboard casket, which, which is already laid with the sheets. So the biggest one is the bottom. The second one is the izar, which is the bottom uh, for the, to cover the like a lungi, and then you have the kameez like this, which is so. At this point, right, if you see, there is a turkey towel below this, which is covering the satar all along, and now once this is covered, we remove the the turkey towel or the one which you used to cover the satar. The satar is between the navel and the knee below the knee. So at this point, what we do is we, you know, when we do, uh, so we anoint with the seven or eight areas of the of the body with uh, some uh, ether or um, um, camphor with little water. When a person prostrates in front of Allah Taala, the sujood while well, doing sujood, the areas that touch the ground, which would be your forehead, the nose tip, the two palms, the two knees, and the back parts of the fingers, right? Those areas we just anoint with. Uh, with a perf uh, perfumed uh, water, which is with, um, uh, you know, the camphor. Camphor water or perfume? Or perfume. So we just apply on the forehead, uh, the nose tip, the two palms, right and left, right knee, left knee, and then the back of the toe tips. Toe tips. So at which point of time we start wrapping, okay? And people sometimes use a little bit of zam on this or the ether, they can apply. So while wrapping the bottom part, so the top is covered, right? The kameez is already cover, covered. The izar, this one, the left part goes here and it wraps below his leg, like this tight. And then you have this one. And then the, this, the top, right side goes on top of it. See how it is wrapped tightly? So in a similar fashion, uh, the yeah. So in a similar fashion, we do the the biggest piece. The biggest piece also goes under his leg and uh, back here. It goes tucked in like a bed sheet tuck on a on a bed. So it gets nicely tucked, and then the right side of it comes on top of this. On top of this, and it gets covered thoroughly. Now we leave the head so that the mehram can view after the you know gusul, so all the daughters, wife can come and view, all the family, brothers and uncles all can view, and once the viewing is complete, then we wrap the the head as well. So all along, um, just this, like I said, this this is an unstitched piece of cloth. You can get in any fabric store, and we have them as well. So we wrap it like this. Again, the left goes and then the right comes on top and it comes tight like this. So at this point, we just tie, use the tie ropes and use a shoelace kind of a tie. So we just apply. So for the head, we just put a single knot with a shoe, shoelace like this. You know. So when they are lowered into the grave, you just undo, untie. Yeah. And same thing, we tie. Sometimes we tie it. Uh, like this, together, or we tie separate. Some, some some can use this to lower if they are an obese person. But and then the midsection is also tied. So at this point, the gusul and the shrouding is complete. You know, and the two hadiths that we generally mention is visit the grave often. Prophet ﷺ said that visit the grave often to remind yourselves of the akira. This world is temporary, and our permanent abode is. Akira, that gets reminded. The second is for the children. For the children, if it is a dad who passed away, the children to fix once a week in a month to visit the grave because the grave, uh, he, uh, soul, expects the family members to visit him. So make it a habit to go once a month on a Saturday morning with the family, all the brothers, 
and the women can read the Quran and send the sawab to the 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 deceased. So with that, that becomes a source of salvation for the the sons, and he will be returned the best son, uh, you know, for his dad. So that's just an hadith, and there's a reward for attending the janaza prayer. Uh, it's kirat. Uh, one one kirat you get if you attend a janaza prayer. One kirat means it's equal to Mount Ohad. That's the reward you get while attending a janaza prayer. So I recommend everyone to wherever there is a janaza, go and join. And the second kirat you get when you go to the kabrstan or to the cemetery for the deceased and say same off. You get another kirat, which is another uh, Mount Ohad reward. So those are basic things, and it's mustahab to take shower for individuals who are given ghusl to go home and take shower and then if they reside very far away uh, you don't have to take shower you can just do wudu so long as your clothes are clean and you are clean so those are the basic things with the shrouding and then before this can be tied we take them to a clean room where Quran can be read everyone sits around the family members read the Quran and they can view them as well and once the viewing is complete then they can uh, cover the face. The the most important thing is uh, the three questions that get asked in the grave when the person is passed away. Amar Rabbuka, who is your Lord? Rabbi Allah, Allah is my Rabb. And then Amar Dinuka, what's your religion? Islam is my religion. And who is the Nabi or the you know or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So those are the three things which we have to remember ourselves to prepare ourselves in, in this dunya. Because our mouth will not speak, it's the conviction of our heart, you know. So those are some reminders for youngsters to prepare ourselves. And how do we prepare? Just to khidmat, good deeds, collect as much as good deeds. Because when we leave, we leave behind wealth, family, house, everything. What we take with us is all the good deeds that we do in this dunya. So it's just a uh, advice for myself and you all, you know. All right, with with that, we can close. Jazakallah for coming. <laughs> it was a pleasure being here. Jazakallah.